This work is dedicated to the guys in duty, the G.O.D. of my understanding. I am so very grateful to what some may call interdimensional beings, spirit guides and muses, those who have passed on, angels, the Holy Spirit or whomever they may be and knowing for certain they are not of the negative polarity. These beings live in the astral and celestial spheres of the many realms of which God consists of and has created, knowing my conscious contact with God begins with all those of other realms whom eventually report to my Lord Jesus Christ, they having helped direct my actions through split-second divine timing causing incidents to occur which have resulted in evidence of synchronicity in my life which could have never come about without their attention being paid to me, to you, the guys on duty, I write so we may share the eternal with this bridge between us as you guide me with the Father's divine love to share with those who continue to listen so they may open conscious contact with you as well, to you Rita, a witness of the following event, I pray you are now observing and progressing from the astral spheres to the celestial spheres. I am not nor will I play the role of a Bible thumper, but I have been known to be a Bible stabber in the past. A number of times in the past I have demonstrated the power of the Bible in my Twilight Zone reality by stabbing a Bible and searching for the page and words at which the tip of the knife last penetrated a page. I would have whomever I was demonstrating to find that spot in the Bible by holding up the pages to the light and let them decide as to which side of the page they wanted me to read from, front or back. These words always fit the circumstances surrounding us at that moment. One of the most incredible times was when Rita, a 52-year-old home-bound woman I was living with, found the spot in it read, a hole in horses. I was quite taken by the fact that, the last page at which the knife blade made a hole, the words, hole in horses, did appear. Not to mention the look on Rita's face as she pointed to the horses on the television which I was unaware of, she was watching Bonanza. Just to let you know, the very last time I stabbed the Bible, which was many years ago it read, Stop reading Israel, as it states in 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 6, Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, the incidents of life in my twilight zone, which I will relate to you, are so incredible and unimaginable that there is no reason to fabricate or exaggerate any of the details. In short simple words, I know how magical and wonderful this little world God created is and I will only speak the truth. The zone I speak of is an acceptance of a spiritual awareness of the magical world, not of the occult variety, which God has created for mankind. Just try to imagine the zone in which the apostles and saints must have lived in. Perhaps now you know that mine is a spiritually enlightened reality, which can only be sanctioned by God. My evidence of this fact is that I am still alive. Fear of turning people off with my little signs from God and a few Bible passages is now non-existent in my world because I believe if you have listened this far, there is a good chance we may have an opportunity to share a moment in the eternal, occurrences were happening so frequently and so non-stop, goosebumps, just weren't appearing. At times it did get so intense I would have to turn off the radio, because I did have to keep my feet on the ground and function in the real world. Countless and endless more incidents occurred, too numerous to relay as well as remember, but I would like to convey, they happened in a flow moment after moment, hour after hour, and day after day, evidence that my world is not full of just what you might call coincidences cannot be denied. But, I'll let you decide for yourself. I will only state one last time, this is the God's honest truth of what has taken place in my life, in the real world, entering in the past has been as simple as requesting to do so. 1. Example of this world's reality was. I placed my hands on the shower wall in front. Of me, palms flat and fingers spread wide as if to place them on a hand. Scanner for clearance to enter a secured facility and asked God for another. Chance to enter, after drying myself off I went to the kitchen counter. 
to turn my small boom box around, since it had been facing towards the dining room, I wanted to hear it better in the bedroom. I hit the power button, only to hear the words, turn the beat around. Having realized how easy it was to step through that doorway really did surprise me, I wanted to confirm if this was true or not. After dressing, I placed the radio on the kitchen table and changed the station, the DJ said, that was, Nine Inch Nails. I cut the cards that were on the table in front of me, damn well knowing that it would be a nine and it was. I hit a preset button, to hear the words T for two. Cutting the cards. Again and knowing it would be a two and it was, also having four dice. From a backgammon set within reach, I rolled them and three times the same. Four numbers came up. So I rolled them a fourth time and the same four numbers appeared. I then thought, don't roll them again you're pushing your luck, but without hesitation, I rolled them a fifth time and they did in fact land on the same four numbers, passage granted and confirmed, I could at will bring people into my reality if I wished to, as long as I was aware of evidence that I myself was ahead of the flow. I call it phasing for lack of a better word. Okay, now there is also the opportunity for phasing to warp into what I call actual. It's when the reflection of the previous event is realized, causing you to relate it to someone as at that moment the previous two events led to a third, even more inexplicable. A most detailed and intricate event occurred while finding myself incarcerated once again. But in this instance, it did not end with the reality that I had gone a little too far and lost touch with the real world. Unexpectedly being jailed did not mean an exit through the doorway. Realizing that God had placed me in this circumstance for a reason I felt it necessary to share my experiences with others. Reading was a great way to pass the time. As I read aloud a particularly interesting sentence in the book I was reading, my bunkmate exclaimed that it was a fitting reply to what he had just read. Without hesitation or a plan we went to the common area outside of our cell and proceeded to grab a handful of books each and sit at one of the steel tables. Each taking turns we would place a finger within the pages and read aloud what it said. Consistently, time after time, what we were reading to each other sounded as if we were having a conversation. Sometimes it was a question with an appropriate answer, others were the continuation of a thought. We did this for several minutes both of us completely amazed at how incredibly intricate and detailed one another's replies had become. Then, I read the words, God sent us a cuckoo as a sign of his sanctioning our actions. At that very moment on the television, a cartoon cuckoo popped out of its clock and announced to us it was there. We both cracked up laughing, uncontrollably. As I was trying to catch my breath, I had to know what book this sentence came from. The book was about a pair of missionaries traveling down the Amazon. As I wanted to read further as to the circumstances for such a statement, a guard called me over to explain why we were laughing. I explained just what we had been doing and when I read the statement again, the cuckoo once again was right on cue. As he was laughing, I decided to see if he too could have followed us through the doorway. I asked him to pick up any two books of about twenty which were in a row placed on the floor against the wall. Having chosen two books, I told him to place a finger within the pages of the first book and read it. As he fanned the page and pointed to words, I said, look and see what they say. To our amazement he pointed at the words, look and see. Now being totally confident that a second demonstration could not fail I told him to do it again with the second book. The words he was now pointing at, read, open your eyes and see. All he could say was, you've certainly opened my eyes.
He asked me who I was and what was I doing there. I told him of the circumstances which landed me there and told him of who I thought I might be, as well as my run-in with Phil Collins in my universal language. His reply was completely unexpected as he told me that his father had taught him my universal language when he was a kid. Not that he remembered it, but his father had in fact spent time talking about exactly the same code. He then said he had to leave and do his job elsewhere. This started me thinking about just how many people I had told my story to. What were the chances that I had actually met his father in the few dozen years I had been on this path? It seemed, in my world, the odds were greatly in my favor. This one event truly strengthened my resolve to continue on the path God had chosen for me regardless of any consequences my actions in the real world might have for me. Later that day I walked up to the door which faced the observation booth and banged on it to get the guard's attention. Without hesitation, this same guard pulled the microphone to his mouth and said, Yes, Messiah. There was no sarcasm in his voice and this only angered me. I yelled back, Don't call me that. There were many times when friends and people around me would be astonished at the fact that I would seem to be talking with a DJ as I would speak to the radio and they would reply as if we were having a conversation, even requesting songs and having them played. I asked a friend, what song would you like to hear next on the radio? His reply, rush, as there was dead air coming from the radio. Between the song that had just ended and the one which was about to play, Rush's song, New World Man began to play. He knew me and this did not surprise him, thanks was all he had to say. For some unknown reason I was trying to remember the name of the movie in which the actor from the movie, the Karate Kid, had a guitar duel with the devil for a soul. At that moment I sat in the car I was working on only to hear the song, Crossroads by Cream, started to play, an instant answer to my question. Crossroads, a roommate had asked me if I could set his radio alarm clock which seemed to be above his technical ability. As I set it to the correct time and switched the alarm button on, the radio came to life with the words, wake me on the inside, came blaring out of it. We both laughed, but I knew this was just an example of divine timing, with my every action and thought being replayed in music and the words of others be they live or through transmitted frequencies, you might understand why and how I might believe I was being watched and monitored by DJs, even so far as believing perhaps they had a secured website with which to view my actions. Knowing that this was truly a delusion, if only for the reason my thoughts could not produce actions and others to react fast enough to answer a question or thought I had on my mind such as wondering about the title to said movie, Crossroads. After years of journeying through the Twilight Zone, I realized that only the power of God could make such occurrences happen. There were a few particular events which nearly caused me to drop to my knees though. I was driving back to work after lunch. Sitting at a stop sign, I looked left, then right, then left again and straight ahead, as I drove forward I heard screeching tires. I looked left to see a yellow Camaro, with its brakes locked up and sliding across the intersection in front of me, past my front end and to my right it settled to a stop about 20 yards away. I sat there for several long moments and wondered if I was going to see backup lights and have a confrontation, he then drove off. I took a deep breath and considered that this idiot came flying around the corner to my left which was about 20 yards away and did not consider someone or something might be around that corner. As he drove away, I drove slowly to the other side of the intersection and intentionally turned on the radio to see the reflection of this event, clearly with no doubt that there would be one. I heard screeching tires that went on and on and then a crash. The announcer said and I quote, 
So you think you're a good driver? Take the safe driver test tonight with Ann Bishop, tonight at 6 on Channel 10. I turned off the radio and proceeded to drive back to work, realizing that every second of time it took till I turned on the radio was crucial. The flow was so intense on one particular day that I just could not take it anymore. It just didn't seem to satisfy me and it held no answers as to why it was happening and it always seemed to lead nowhere except helping others out of their alternative realities. I worked in a shop which always had at least five cars in it and everyone working on them had their radios turned on. I was fit to be tied, so I turned off my radio and actually taped the trigger to my air drill on, so I could not hear anyone else's radio. Didn't work, from the far end of the shop I heard the words, since you've been gone, all that is left is a band of gold. I looked down at the ring finger on my left hand and my wedding band was not there. I trembled for an instant, jumped out of the car and ran over to the car a co-worker was backing out of the shop to have delivered to its owner. I opened the trunk and retrieved my ring. I had given him a hand. Earlier in the day, in order to run one of the drain tubes for the sunroof into a wheel well, I had taken the ring off so I could fit my hand into a very tight space. Well, hell, I then realized that for whatever reason there was for this flow, it was a good thing. While driving in my car, I looked at the clock, 1033 translates in Earth. Code to amplify Jesus, I turned on the radio and heard the words, Jesus is just all right with me. The two B brothers were right. On cue. 1 day as I was zipping around the stations, simply to use the words I was hearing, to make synaptic connection and create thoughts that might have never occurred to me otherwise. I hit the AM frequency band without warning. And I heard one gentleman say to the other, with panic in his voice, he's at it again, just zipping around the frequencies. What? What? We were told that he wouldn't be monitoring these frequencies. What should we do now? It's too late, he's heard us talking about him. And then completely. Dead. Air. Years later, I had heard about the. Truman Show, but had not seen it till several years after it was. Released. When I did get a chance to see it, my only interest in. Seeing it was purely to check out the technology to do such a thing, as in the movie. The Truman Show. I had such a moment of perception, which altered all reality, such as the moment Truman heard, due to a frequency anomaly, on his radio that he had just almost had an accident and run over a woman. When I saw this scene, it was as though Jim Carrey was doing an impression of me, as I had reacted during my cross frequency event. Across the shop I heard this awful racket. I turned to hear Tony's personal cooling fan. The fan blade was hitting the safety cage it was confined in. He walked over and adjusted it, so it would stop making the racket. He looked at me and shook his head, then stood there looking at it, to see if it would remain quiet. Several moments later I yelled, Hey Tony and pointed to the fan as though I would make it start screaming again and it did. Twice more that. Day I got out of the car I was working on to repeat this feat, with exactly the same results. This was one of those cases, I believe God smacked me for, I thought I was causing it to happen, not realizing, God had simply placed me in the right spot at the right moment, oh yes, the power of the finger. One stormy night while on the balcony I shot out my finger, in a gun type fashion at the ground below. I wish I could have had it on film because a lightning bolt struck at that precise moment and spot. All I could do is turn away and crack up laughing. Send a bolt of lightning very, very frightening. This last incident led to a reality much deeper beyond the doorway, a reality where the physical world seemed to be controlled by my will. This of course was not the case, but appeared to be. An example of this included my ability, as I would notice several leaves. Blowing down the street and at the moment I would focus on one. Specifically if it would stop dead in its tracks as if nailed to the ground instantly. This was not a sometime occurrence, it happened. 
countless times, time after time. Let me tell you, just when you think you're hot shit, God will send a whole stampede of leaves, and they all will ignore your gaze. Now knowing that my will was not the force which actually was causing this effect, I developed a relationship with the wind, it became a friend. Several and more detailed occurrences happened while having the wind as a friend, such as pointing at debris in the wind and drawing a path I knew it was going to take and in fact having it follow the path I had drawn with my finger. The most intense event was as I stepped off a bus, a rush of leaves approached me and stopped a couple of feet in front of me. Without thinking or realizing how bizarre my thoughts were, I had the sense of greeting a friend. About a foot away from my left foot stopped a small branch, with about a dozen leaves on it. I thought of it as making a goal between my feet. I thought, wide left, since it was closest to my left foot. Instantaneous of this thought, the branch was blown outside of my right foot. I considered that it did. In fact travel the longer distance to miss the goal between my feet. It did in fact miss wide left, from the leaves point of view and not mine. My reality at this time was, that the wind was a multi-dimensional force, with the ability to sense and individual's intent. It now actually falls under the category, God knows what you're thinking and it can demonstrate its willingness to show you his presence. While walking down the street a few blocks from my home, my attention was drawn to a fast-spinning 18-inch rainbow-colored pinwheel on a lawn. I turned 90 degrees to my right and stared at it and thought, it would be nice if it stopped and at that instant it did. A few moments after it stopped I thought, reverse direction and instantly it did. Believe me it did. There was the time, for no reason I decided to see if I could flick a cigarette butt through the ceiling fan blades as they spun and hit the ceiling, so I flicked and watched it ricochet straight down and appear to land directly into a red tumbler sitting on the table. I thought, good shot and went to pick up the tumbler to see if it had landed in some liquid to put it out. As I was lifting it, I then saw the cigarette butt standing on the filter and still burning. While walking across the shop, headed back to a car, with a drain tube. In my hand, I snapped it like a whip, changing the station I heard, bull. Whips cracking, from the song Southern Man, while pouring glue into a tube, I heard Phil Collins sing, there's a hole in there somewhere, so I turned the tube around, sure enough, there was glue leaking out of a hole. This reminds me of the time I asked, Mom, is the word, a wash? Or can it be used as a washed? She said. She wasn't sure if it could be used as a washed. The reason I asked was because I wanted to use the word in my third attempt at writing my first book in 1997. Using it to say Phil Collins had been awashed with a blinding light. Well, moments after I asked the question, she called to me and said that she was doing a crossword puzzle and that the next Word across was, a wash. One particular gentleman threatened me with bodily harm if I didn't stop what I was doing. I mentioned a song and it came on the radio. So he turned off the radio and turned on the television. So I went out for some cigarettes. When I got back, I then told him I had seen a pizza box lying upside. Down in the road and a dog sniffing around the box. So I kicked the box. Over so the dog might have a chance to lick what might be inside. Well, much to both of our surprise, there was an entire pizza in the box, so the dog went to town. I could see by my friend's reaction that it was not what I had expected to this cute little story. He replied, I told you to stop it. He was now pointing to the television in the pizza, pizza commercial, in which the dog is attacking the pizza delivery man. I could tell that the best thing for me to do is sit and not say or do anything until we slipped out of the flow. At home, using an extension cord for my headphones so I could listen on. The balcony, as I was exiting through the sliding glass door, at the same moment a short and the whirring occurred, Phil was singing, I see. Your lifeline is breaking. While sitting at my typewriter writing my story there was an unusually great number of times that I heard the word I was typing said on the television or radio, not just small everyday words. Words which one might not say in an entire day's conversation, sitting and listing the three songs I had listened to every day at lunch, 
on the jukebox at a Pizza Hut, in the year of the Tiger 1975, they were, Radar Lover by, Golden Earring, Smoke on the Water by Deep, Purple and Hypnotized by Fleetwood Mac. One by one, every one of these songs was played by the radio station I was listening to. Then there was the night that the Rolling Stones were playing at Joe Robbie Stadium, a few miles away from my balcony. A local rock radio station was playing the Bridges to Babylon album at the same time, they were on stage. Between songs, the DJ stated that there had been gate crashers at the concert. It was time to go out on the balcony and have a smoke, I stepped to the railing and looked down. You're not going to believe me, but I saw a car crashed into the security gate just below. It gets even better or should I say stranger. Later that night, while listening to another station playing a song from the Bridges to Babylon album, the song which sings about waking the fire chief, came on. I was staring at a car which had crashed into the median wall on the expressway below and was now completely engulfed in flames. At work, while unwrapping a single-edge razor blade, it dropped out of my hand and fell to the floor. The strange thing was, I didn't hear it hit. Without moving my feet I looked down to see where it had landed. I couldn't see it as I looked straight down and all around my feet, it was nowhere to be seen. Taking a step back, it came into view. Unbelievably it was standing on end, that's right, standing on. Razor's edge. I realized while I was looking straight down at it, looking for a rectangular shiny object, I did not see it, because I had been viewing it as a thin straight line. I called two others over to look at what had just happened, they knew that I was not making this story up and they looked in amazement. Then, one of the salesmen walked over and picked it up and sent it back down in exactly the same spot and it stood there. Logic told me that it had fallen directly perpendicular to the floor with just enough speed and momentum to tack into the deck paint which covered the floor. The deck paint was quite dry, since it had been painted when we first moved into the shop, two years earlier. Having reached complete and absolute peace of mind was not my goal, it just happened. Up until that time, only a glimpse of it was reached. Completely by accident. The glimpse took place as I was reclined on a lawn chair outside of an acquaintance's mobile home, near Disney World. I had taken a bike ride from Miami to Orlando and when I arrived, no one was home. As I sat and waited for someone to arrive, I closed my eyes and began to listen to a single cricket. It became so clear and loud in my mind, as I listened to and heard every vibration. I had listened so intently for a period of time and had no thoughts of my own, that in an instant I became aware of the fact that I could no longer feel my body and that I had indeed not hit a thought of my own, from the moment I decided to actually hear the sounds of the cricket. My entire being was now only the vibrations which I could see. At this point, realizing I was indeed having an out-of-body experience, being fully awake and aware of where I was. A thought crossed my mind, is it possible to get even closer to this sound and not have to return to the physical and how do I return to my body? I decided to shake my left arm, a strange sensation to say the least. I opened my eyes and sat up, completely dumbfounded over what had just happened. It was about three years later before remembering this event had ever happened. The reason this event came to memory was because it happened again. Seated in a recliner at home listening to music, the same circumstances and sensations occurred and at that moment I flashed back to my encounter with the cricket. This realization snapped me out of it, instantly, with a head full of thoughts. How did I do this? Could I do this at 
will ankindite each other to achieve this state of mind. It was quite a surprise to me that I had forgotten all about that cricket, let alone it was a cricket near Disney World. What a great sensation, so I decided to take some time and figure out if I could develop a step-by-step -step way to repeat the sensation. I also wanted to know exactly what part of my body was the last I could feel. Answering all of these questions did make it a little more difficult to return to this state. Your own thoughts do make it more difficult to disconnect, but I persisted until the following events took place. Reclined with the music on, trying to hear every note, I let my body settle to its lowest point, actually feeling dropping sensations and wave after wave. Letting my eyes settle to a position which seemed to let them float independent of my senses. Seal the mouth closed, with all air slightly sucked out and with the tongue filling the space behind closed teeth. At this point making sure my entire body was in a comfortable position without any pulling or extra pressure or tension. This includes folds in the skin as well as hair. At this stage, any readjustment was fine. After several minutes of settling, readjusting and relaxing my nervous system, it was very important to remain awake, being sure to listen and hear every vibration of the music. The goal is to put the body to sleep and awaken the mind. My first attempt to achieve disconnect while recalling all of the steps to do so did make it more difficult. But I persisted, only to realize so many things had to take place in order to do it just right. First of all, twitches and facial muscles had to be the first to cease. Emotions or reactions to sound must not reflect in the face. Next is the awareness of your entire body as a whole. If you are aware of motion in the nervous system, then concentrate on a part of the body which has completely settled and not moved since the start. Generally, it is the feet, or perhaps a hand, in which you can no longer feel fingers touching fingers. Let this area spread, realizing how much of your body you actually cannot sense, but be aware of the fact that these portions are on their way to spreading. During this phase of the process, continue to hear the music and all of its vibrations as you take inventory of your physical being. Once comfortable, now feeling or being aware that sound and thought are not located or emanating from the region of the head and face, the sensation is that the entire physical being is the receptor of thought and sound. It seems awareness of thought and sound can be moved anywhere within the confines of your physical being. Perhaps the most difficult task is to not become aware of your breathing and expanding chest. During my first attempt, I tried every breathing pattern, long slow deep breaths, short shallow breaths and any other combination I could think of, until I fell into a rhythm which to this day I do not know, worked. I simply did not become overly focused on it. Certainly, by this point, you will have become aware of sensations which you've never experienced. Know you are on your way, but never stop listening to and hearing the music, delving ever deeper into all of the separate sounds and vibrations which make it up and the fact that you are truly hearing them all at once. You might even wonder, why? Hasn't anyone ever told me about this sooner? Just one hint, if you ever have to swallow, for any reason, before or after reaching this point, stop and try over at a later time. It's an action of the physical which cannot be overcome. During an attempt, then it began to happen, the moment I had been searching for 
the moment of disconnection and the knowledge of which part of my body I would last be connected with. Without warning the feeling was as though there was a very tight rubber band stretched over the top of my head, behind my ears and under my jaw. This area began to move forward with ever increasing speed, as though the rubber band were going to slip off the front of my face. That is exactly what happened when it reached the point that an actual rubber band would have snapped off of my face. It did. But it didn't just snap off of my face. The sensation of it leaving was physical, past, and beyond my face. I heard a loud snap with the intensity of a bullwhip cracking and saw a brilliant spark at a point just in front of the bridge of my nose. How freaking incredible this was! I had now separated my consciousness from its physical self. I was now only the music I was listening to, if you want to call it that. Listening was not exactly how one in this state would classify it, you have to be there to appreciate it. In the simplest of terms, I was seeing and feeling it, in all of its splendor and detail in detail which would make the virtual reality of today's most sophisticated computers seem like a black and white television showing of the Lone Ranger. I was able to reach this state reclined in a chair or flat on my back in bed within 20 minutes. But this ability was only there for a few weeks because peace of mind had slipped away due to circumstances surrounding me. I was informed that business was slow and my job could not support me full time and I would have two more weeks to train someone to replace me part time. During this two week period, attempts to return to the higher plane were fruitless. Once I was no longer employed, the realization that I was so incredibly lucky to be 21 years old and living in South Florida. At the time, the odds against it were incredible. Considering how many people had lived and died before now and how many people would do the same long after I was gone and the environments they had a chance of living in, the odds were astronomical. An acceptance of this reality helped ease my mind so I was going to return to the place. I had been before. I had tried every position before this last attempt with no success. So this time I was going to do my best to create the perfect circumstances for success. I spread a sheet on the day bed in the living room, making sure to lay it flat, as well as myself naked. It took a moment or two to make sure there were no wrinkles on the sheet under me, no tugs on my skin or hair. The music was on, dark side of the moon. All was going exceptionally well, step by step and then it happened. The disconnect was about to take place, the rubber band effect started. But at the moment I expected to hear the snap and see the spark. There was a great flash of brilliant white light instead. Now, instantly, viewing a sheet of the purest brilliant white light I have ever seen, where I knew my body should be. The realization that I was viewing it, not from within, but completely detached from it, did not seem to shock or surprise me. In that instant I truly knew what had been accomplished. I had separated my consciousness from my body and was now viewing my spirit. My point of view was from 45 degrees and slightly above my face and past the top of my head. I knew where my consciousness was and where my spirit was, but I had no sense of where my body actually was. Without hesitation and for some unknown reason I began to think about my left knee. Much to my surprise, black hole or void of light developed in this sheet of light, just where my knee should be.
as soon as I stopped thinking about the area of my knee, it immediately shrank and became brilliant again. I seem to have all of the answers and knowledge surrounding the reason for my existence and the purpose of my life. At that moment knowing I had somehow tapped into universal knowledge, with this thought I began to shake my left arm. Now finding myself sitting up on the edge of the day bed, with a mission and purpose for my life, I got dressed and went for a walk, with only one regret. I was so intent on viewing my spirit, I neglected to look up and around myself to see what was out there, and perhaps seeing who else might be viewing me in this state. Evidently someone had been viewing me in that state and I did in fact get their attention. It was some 18 years later that I became aware of one of those somebodies. It was mid-afternoon as I was lying on the water bed at home, in my wife's condominium, face down with my arms under my body and hands palms up against the front of my thighs. I lay there in a completely peaceful and content state of mind. At no point did I fall asleep. My eyes were closed and I had barely gotten comfortable when I heard a voice coming from one of the guys on duty standing about three feet from my head and to my right say, get up, I instantaneously considered how. But without wasting a heartbeat or single thought or movement of my body I raised straight up and above the bed by about a foot and a half. At the moment I reached this point the voice said, go through the wall. So I did, still in a horizontal position I floated straight through the wall, head first. As I passed through the wall, all I can say is it was kind of like watching the Starship Enterprise travel through some sort of warp field or plasma distortion. All in muddy browns and earth tone hues. Once through, I popped out and was flying above grass covered slopes. This was completely awesome. I had flown in dreams and had out of body experiences in the past and knew that I could control my speed and elevation just by thinking about it. But I had never been told to do so. I was flying several yards above the ground or should I say well manicured grass of rolling hills and slopes. Off to my left at the tops of one of the rises, I saw what could have been a very large building, dwelling or even a city. Its size and proportions were not exactly of my concern. But I do remember what it looked like and could draw a design, even today, some twenty years later, now completely aware of the circumstances I found myself in. I decided to see just what my capabilities were. I flew at varying speeds and heights. Higher and faster than I had ever gone before and with such control, never possible by me before, I decided to accelerate upward and see how high I could fly. At the peak of my flight I saw what appeared to be crystal, silver or shiny orbs. About three of them spread just ahead of me and to my right, then it happened. Well it is kind of anticlimactic. Music lyrics of an earthly nature popped into my head. Something about crystal ships and starship troopers. And wham I was back in my body, the best I can figure is because of words and thoughts of this physical world, I was slammed back into my body, to say the least, I was quite impressed and wanted to thank that guy on duty which popped into my bedroom. So here I am formally thanking you, I would like to warn you the listener that, of course not all the guys on duty are of the positive polarity. No fooling. Doe, this brings me to the day them other guys tried to warn me, or just let me know what they and their negative polarity earthlings would cause me to endure. It was about five years after my flying experience when these little demons let me know they were also aware of me. No joke, about five or six years later, I for very good reasons, walked out on my wife about a year prior to the following incident. I was staying with a co-worker in his apartment. I had lost my apartment previously to moving in with him, for some of those obvious events in my life. His name was Mike and he was what some might call a skinhead. Not really, but he had perhaps one of the most vulgar mouths you would ever hear in public. Children, old ladies, your mother your father, in restaurants, movies, it didn't matter. I had to sleep on his couch and this meant I could only sleep after he and his friends were finally done with the living room, at any hour of the night, it was around midday as I was laying on my back and glad to finally be stretching out. Fully awake and aware of where I was, all of a sudden I was being dragged over a counter by these, 
what I can only call little demons. Short little creatures which took many of them to drag me over the countertop. Okay now, I've had out of body experiences, dreams and even some nightmares, but nothing like this. I was feeling actual pain as they scratch and clawed and even bit at my hands and arms. The pain is what was so real, I had never felt pain such as this in my astral or spirit body. After shaking myself back to my physical body I inspected my hands and arms and was just so glad they didn't leave any marks. Little did I know back then that this was just a warning. A warning in the sense that my future life in Fort Lauderdale, away from the sheltered life of my mother and or my wife, was going to be like, kind of like, my new friends and associates were about to chew me up and spit me out, as so many new kids in town are, the wrong people places and things have me now living and just waiting for the whole system to come down around us. On this day of our dictator being sworn in for a second time and swearing to do just what he has no intention of doing, other than what he might have sworn to those demons of the negative polarity. Swear to uphold the constitution my ass. Guys on duty, you're up.